Welcome. Now I've got an update on symptoms of COVID-19. And this is important for a couple of reasons. So I've decided to do it as a standalone video rather than tag it on to a general update video. And the reason it's important, fairly obvious really, we need to be able to recognize the clinical symptoms early so we can isolate. Early recognition of clinical symptoms followed by isolation and testing if appropriate is absolutely essential to reducing the rapid rate of spread that we're currently seeing in Europe and indeed in the United States. And the other reason is that I wanted to stress this is this is not listed on the Centre for Disease Control list of symptoms in the United States. So it looks like they're kind of missing a trick really. That really does need updated. I really do hope they pay attention to that fairly soon. And the features we're talking about are headache and fatigue. So straight onto it now. Now, obviously, um, you're not going to accept my word for it. You're going to check on the original site yourself. Headache and fatigue have been described as the dark horse symptoms of COVID-19. Um, people experience these and don't realise that it could be COVID-19. Now, most commonly experienced early symptoms are headache and fatigue. 82% of people experience headache. 72% of people experience undue fatigue. And this is described as like a really severe tiredness where people just want to go to bed, basically. Mental uh, and physical tiredness, just undue fatigue and tiredness. So remember, 82% getting headaches, 72% getting undue fatigue. Not quite universal, but, but, but very, very common. These are the most commonly experienced early symptoms. And you can see straight away that this is just so important because someone could have a headache and or and or tiredness. So they could have a headache on its own or the extreme fatigue on its own. Think, oh, I'll just try and work through it because we're tough. We, we drag ourselves off to work. But that could be an early symptom of COVID-19. So we could be spreading the infection to all our workmates or our social circle or our classmates or whatever it is. Because this is the case for all age groups. Most common presenting feature, early feature in all age groups. Now, 9% of COVID uh, positive adults aged 18 to 65 didn't experience headache or fatigue. In other words, more than 9 out of 10 had one of these. If you haven't experienced headache or fatigue, you're in a minority of 9%. Most people do. Now, having said that... Of course, who hasn't had headache or fatigue? I was a bit tired myself this morning. It's, it's yeah, everyone gets it, of course, of course. So 1% of people who reported fatigue and or headache tested positive for COVID-19. So in other words, lots of people who have headache and fatigue, of course, don't have COVID-19. It's not specific and you get false positives, but it's enough to, that you should be thinking about it. And probably, in fact, certainly isolating until you give it a day or so to see if other symptoms develop. 3% uh, of people who tested positive uh, who tested positive for COVID-19 had headache and fatigue alone. In other words, in only 3% of people was this the only clinical features. Most people went on to develop classical clinical features like fever, cough, um, fever, cough, breathlessness. Um, but it's interesting that 3% of people who tested positive had a headache and fatigue alone. What this really means is that often this will present with headache and fatigue, but then in 97% of people, these other symptoms will come along. But these can be early symptoms, but are very rarely uh, isolated symptoms on their own. That's what that means. So I thought that was pretty interesting, really. Um, and this is based on thousands of cases. Um, of course, there's about 4 million people filling in the COVID symptom tracker app now. And it's also correlated with several thousand tests as well. So this is, this is good quality data. Um, therefore, having, having either or both of those, the headache or the fatigue, uh, is unlikely to be indicative of COVID. But it could be an early warning feature. But you probably will get further features. So, so this is the early warning part that's important here. The classic uh, uh, classic triad, the classic three are still the key. Cough, fever, loss of smell, of course. 40% of all age groups um, fever in the first 11 days. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so only 40% had fever in the first, sorry, first seven days. 
Interesting, 60% did not have fever. Now, what I want to do now is just bear that information in mind. So just bear in mind that the, the, the headache and fatigue presents in, in the vast majority of people who present with COVID-19. It presents early. It does not usually present alone. Usually other clinical features will come along, but it's an important indicator to make a stop and think and isolate for 24, 48 hours and see if other clinical features come along. Now, the other thing that this group has done is it's produced some nice infographics, which you might know I'm rather fond of uh, infographics. So let's just take a look at these now. And here's the, fir here's the first one. There's the first one, yeah. So here's the first one. Now, um, most common symptoms in the first seven days. And of course, this is so important because we don't want to miss these. So we know about we know about the headache and fatigue. Let, let's just look at uh, the the percentages now, because we know the headache and fatigue apply to all age groups, but not quite not quite in the same way. So um, under 18s, 55% had headache, 53% had fatigue, 48% had fever, 40% had sore throat, 38% had cough. In under 18s. 18 to 65, more had fatigue, as we see here. So 53% there with fatigue, 82% there with fatigue. 75% with headache. Again, quite a bit higher than in the under 18 group. Loss of smell here is 55%. Cough, it's 49%. Sore throat, it's 49%. But then in the over 65s, we see this distribution. Fatigue, 82%. Headache, 54%. Loss of appetite, skipping meals, 40%. Fever, 41%. Cough, 41%. So we do see this slight uh, differentiation in the amount of people at different age groups that are presenting. But I don't expect you to memorise those. I mean, obviously, the, the key thing is that the headache and fatigue present in all, commonly in all age groups as an early feature. But I thought that was really quite a nice infographic. D download it for yourself. For the, the, um, the link is there. These are freely uh, downloadable. Now, a few other infographics here. Um, fever, loss of smell, persistent cough. 82% of people who tested positive experience one or more of the typical symptoms. So uh, more than 8 out of 10 are going to experience fever and or loss of smell and or persistent cough. And the, the way I test for this, um, there's a few times I've wondered if I've had it. And when I, I just go and sm sniff the coffee jar, see if you can smell the coffee. That, that's, a, that's a good test. If you can sniff the coffee, you probably haven't got the anosmia. Not that everyone gets that, of course. So that's useful there. Most people are still getting the fever, loss of smell and the persistent cough. Um, 60, about 60% 60 of all age groups did not report fever, did not report fever. So only about 40% of people getting fever. This is not what we thought in the early days. Um, but that's what the data is showing. So most people not getting fever. Uh, fever when it occurs only occurs in the early phases, but disappears fairly soon. So fever is if it's going to occur in the 40% that fever occurs, it's an early feature, and it's a relatively short lived feature. 55% uh, of 18 to 65 year olds report loss of smell. This is the most predictive symptom of COVID-19. In other words, the loss of smell in the main adult age group, the uh, 18 to 65 age group, it's the most specific symptom. It's more specific than the other clinical features. So if you have lost your sense of smell, it's a good chance that, that well, it's, it's, it's more probable uh, that it's COVID than say if you've developed a, a cough or something like that. It's the most predictive symptom. So test uh, test smell of yourself and your family members regularly. It's simple, it's easy, it doesn't cost anything. Why not do it? So 55% in the adult range group. 26% uh, in the over 65. So less in the over 65s and less again in the under 18s. Interesting. So this is largely a feature of the 18 to 55s, but not exclusively. Fewer over 65 year olds report loss of smell, fewer younger people report loss of smell. 
loss of smell may go unnoticed in children. Now, that doesn't mean to say it's not there. It's just that children might not notice. So if you've got children and you are remotely concerned, then feel free to test to see if they can smell the coffee or, or whatever it is. You know, te test it. So children may have it more commonly than we think they've got it. We have to take the initiative and think, ah, have they got loss of smell? Let, let's test for that because the child may not uh, complain of it. Um, loss of smell persists for, can persist for a long time, but may not be one of the earliest signs. So the loss of the sense of smell may not come straight away, but if it does come, it's fairly specific, but it may hang around for some time. Now, I haven't got specific figures on this, but I have talked to individuals who haven't regained their sense of smell for some weeks. So more data to come on that, how long that's going to last for. 49% um, of people aged 18 to 65 reported a sore throat. So about half of people get a sore throat. Uh, reports of shortness of breath. Under 18, 23%. 18 to 65, 39%. Over 65, 34%. So interesting, again, the adult, what we might call the normal adult range there, reporting shortness of breath most often. 7 in 20, 18 to 65 year olds reported chest pain. So 7 in 20, that's quite a high proportion of people reporting chest pain as one of their clinical features. Quite a high proportion. Okay, so that is, um, that are, that's, uh, those infographics do download them for yourself. <clears throat> Very interesting. Now, one more thing on symptoms that, again, is not mentioned as far as I know in the CDC, is the rash. Now, not all patients get a rash, um, but the British Society of uh, Dermatologists, who are the guys that should know what they're talking about, they have um, given us these pictures on the website. And again, you've got the link. Um, well worth having a browse of these of these pictures uh, for yourself click on and have, have a look on your own computer the link is there um, so what what is amazing here really quite surprising is the wide possible you know you, you'd like to say well okay you can get a skin rash in COVID-19 what's the rash like well the answer is you can just be just about anything very wide spectrum of rashes that are possible and uh, it's great that the uh, Society of Dermatologists has identified these. Now, I'm not going to go into these in detail. We have mentioned some of them in the past, but um, but you can. The great thing about it is that you can you can click on these, and you can you can look at the uh, the rash in more detail. Um, COVID uh, fingers and toes were talked about early on, weren't they? Quite a bit. Um, see the inflammation there in the toes. The red toenails, of course, are painted. Painted toenails, such a problem in healthcare. In A&E, when people have got painted nails, because you're, um, you're, you have to put the, um, the, these probes, you have to put them on, you have to put them on sideways like that. So normally you put them on like that <laughs> to get your fingers, but you've got to put them on sideways because the, uh, the, 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 the finger in sideways like that, because the nail varnish is supposed to be in like that. Because <laughs> the nail varnish, um, messes it up anyway i digress um what else have we got so yeah a lot just lots of different presentations of rash really um or all there what's that one yeah yeah so i i do expect the uh dermatologist to add to this uh library fairly shortly but um well well worth a browse to look at so i thought that was important just to do that as a separate video um headache and fatigue early warning sign of covid19 doesn't necessarily mean you've got it but it means you should think about it self-isolate and uh, the, the vast majority of people who do go on to co get covid19 will develop other symptoms after that so important because we need to isolate people in the early stages of the condition because you're probably most infectious in the 24 hours before and the day or two after day one the first day you develop clinical features that's why this early part is so critical
Thank you for watching.